chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. If you guys have not already, be sure to check out my novice and intermediate programs down below. Much more than just exercises on a sheet, I got you covered with everything you need to make more gains in less time and shock your past self for the long term. And speaking of that, probably the biggest thing that many bros struggle with in our development is the upper chest. This muscle is notorious for being stubborn to grow. That upper slope seems to just never want to fill in. And as is obligatory talking about pecs, we have to bring up Arnold. His side chest pose, and really his pecs in general, they have created more cases of body dysmorphia in men than we could probably ever count. I mean, this is beyond top 1% genetics. This is something that we may never see again. So while something like this is simply out of the cards for pretty much every single person watching this video, you still can grow the upper chest if you can tactically approach it. So we have two big objectives when it comes to effective, dare I say, optimal upper chest training. One, we want to bias the upper chest as much as we can. Notice there I said bias, not isolate, because completely isolating a muscle is just not possible. And two, we need to keep shoulder stress to a minimum, because nothing is going to keep your chest as flat as Kansas, like endless shoulder pain, so be sure not to neglect your rear delt and your upper back work too. It's very common to hear people say just do incline, as if that is the end-all be-all solution to grow the upper chest. But I have been doing incline bench in some variation for a few years now, and I'm not sure it's that simple. I classify a typical incline barbell press as more of a front delt exercise than an upper chest exercise. Or at least I would say that they're split evenly. But especially if you're somebody with longer arms, whenever you're moving the bar a considerable distance, when you're sitting angled at 45 degrees, your upper chest is obviously being hit. How could it not be? But your front delts are bearing a huge amount of that load too. Now a 30 degree angle is probably going to hit the upper chest more so than 45, but some gyms, like mine, they only have benches that begin at 45 degrees. And I've never seen a rackable incline bench where you can place a barbell that isn't 45 degrees. When it comes to a lot of these adjustable benches, I don't know what people are thinking. They've got 45, 60, 75, 90, but 30 is apparently too much to ask. But I digress. And this is why you'll hear people say that they like the Smith Machine Incline Bench for the upper chest, since that bar path is totally linear, and that stabilization component that you have to deal with when using free weights, it is not present. So I've done the Smith Machine Incline Bench, and I'm definitely a fan of it, but I also have crippling OCD. So whenever I do this exercise, even if it feels very good, I spend all my time between sets and even before I start the set, kicking and nudging and slightly pushing the bench because I can't fully convince myself that it's totally centered in the Smith machine, and I waste way too much time doing it, which is a very dumb excuse not to do it, but I guess it's mine. And really, too, depending on the gym that you're in, especially if you're in a big box facility, the Smith machine is something that is usually going to have a line so long, it's like you're waiting for a roller coaster at the theme park. So if that's the case for you and you cannot afford to wait around, the Smith machine might be off the table, at least on a regular basis. And machines like this one on the screen here are also very good, especially the ones that can converge more toward the top. I think they do a very, very good job at hitting the upper chest. But even then, some of you are training in home gyms or very limited facilities, you do not have access to any of the machines that I just talked about. So now we return to good old-fashioned free weights. And an old adage you may have heard is that underhand grip on the bench press activates your upper chest noticeably more than the standard grip. And the reverse grip bench press is something that seems to make its way back into popularity every year or two, roughly. So I guess it's my turn to bring it back. And I used to do 500 pounds on that lift. And it's commonly something that will peak interest and a lot of guys will do it for a couple weeks and then they get tired of it and they stop doing it altogether, kind of like neck training. And this is very interesting because if you search up the reverse grip bench press, you are going to come across a mythical study that may or may not actually exist. I have seen this mentioned on numerous websites and articles and forums and we can look at a few of the examples right here. So this one says the anatomy of the reverse grip bench press. One study showed that using a reverse grip on the bench, flat, not even incline, increased subjects' upper pec activity 
by 30%. Notice we have no citation given. This article, which exercise is best? Believe it or not, studies have shown that when compared to the standard bench press with an overhand grip, the reverse grip bench press activity of the clavicular head increased by 30%. There's that same figure. This one has a citation, but there is no hyperlink, and I scroll down to the bottom, there is nothing to be seen. Then even here on R Fitness, ugh, this guy says reverse grip flat bench hits 30% more than incline. This got some discussion going on Reddit, but once again, there is not a reference to be found. And I did my own extensive research on Google for 45 seconds about this topic, and I couldn't find anything either. So it seems we're at an impasse. This is a Schrodinger study. We can't say for sure that it doesn't exist, but we have no proof that it does. By the way, quick pro tip, if you want to win an argument that you're having, just say study show and then spew out whatever thing you want to say. So while the hard data seems to have ghosted us, we can still put on our thinking caps and try to solve this problem. So in terms of reverse grip and pec development, let's just try something. Put your right hand over your heart, like we're about to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Reach out your left arm as if you're at the top of a bench press. Normal grip as you can see here. Whenever you go from the typical pronated grip, twist into the supinated grip, you can feel your upper chest seem to fire a little bit more. It seems like it is contracting more so than the standard bench press position. And that's all I got. And listen, I understand this is not a pristine meta-analysis of optimal pectoral hypertrophy. What are you doing using your big school words? Just use normal people words and I'll understand what you're talking about. Is it bro science? Yeah. But I've been doing bro science for seven years now, so I am uniquely qualified to speak on these matters. I mean, it's still more valid than the study that doesn't exist. So whether that changed your mind or not, the upper chest is so stubborn that we all will pretty much try anything. So if you're going to try the reverse grip bench press, whether it's flat or incline, the biggest issue with it really is that it's just a pain in the ass. So first of all, you're going to have to lower the weight compared to your normal bench press, which is already unimpressive. And I have not done this lift enough to give a percentage of what it's going to be compared to the normal bench. I'd assume for most guys, probably something like 60 to 70%, maybe 75% roughly. And it could even be less when you're just adapting to this exercise. And the reverse grip for a lot of guys is simply uncomfortable to hold, unless you have grizzly bear paw hands. And it's very easy for the bar to roll on you. So I will say, if you do not have safety arms, or at the bare minimum a spotter, which is no guarantee today, do not do this exercise with a barbell. I don't care how giddy you are, or how much pre-workout you took, or how many girls are nearby, you drop a reverse grip bench press on your throat, I'll see you at your funeral, man. So assuming that you don't die, why does this exercise work the upper chest so well? The bar path of a reverse grip bench inherently goes at not only more of an angle, it's really at more of a curve or even a scoop shape. So the bar is going to have to go slightly lower down on your chest than a standard bench press. Whenever you press up, especially because your wrists are going to be leaning forward, so the bar has really less of a chance to roll back at you, you almost make a really modified J-shape whenever you press it back up. Almost like you're doing an exercise that you may have seen this before where people get in a cable cross and they bring two cables and converge them up to their chest. It's kind of a similar motion to that in terms of what the bar is doing on a reverse grip bench. On top of that too, this tends to be easier on the shoulders. A lot of guys who get shoulder pain on the standard bench press will say that it is mostly or entirely alleviated when they do a reverse grip. And not just because, oh, bench hurts my shoulders, like a lot of guys say, because their form sucks and they have flared elbows. Some guys can use that as a coping mechanism for their standard bench press, whether their form is bad or if they're just weak. They say, okay, screw that, I'm gonna focus on reverse grip. And that's fine if you want to, but if you cannot do a standard bench press with very good form, you have absolutely no reason to be doing the reverse grip version at all. Now, like we said earlier, we want to bias the upper chest as much as possible. A lot of guys say that the reverse grip is really going to hit their triceps too. That might be individual, but I can definitely see the reasoning behind that. And perhaps the biggest disadvantage of the reverse grip bench press in terms of just the mechanics, it can be very, very stressful on the wrist. And some guys simply are not going to be able to do it it's kind of similar to front squats. You might be able to do some, mainly later rep work with it, but if you're going to start to push the intensity 
and lift heavier, it may become so overwhelmingly painful that not only is it dangerous, it's just not worth doing at all. That's probably one of the biggest things that stops guys from doing this for any significant length of time, kind of like it did for me. It's something I might look into implementing more so down the line, but you do need a lot of patience with this lift. So while I'm not doing a reverse grip barbell press right now, what I am doing is using dumbbells, because they are the best of both worlds. So if you do have access to a 30 degree adjustable bench, you can use that for dumbbells rather than the built-in barbell benches. That is a pro. The wrists also are not locked in with dumbbells like they are on a bar. This allows for more movement freedom, less stress, and really less overall headache, and much more safety because there's no way to really guillotine yourself with dumbbells. I'm also able to get the deepest stretch that I can using the underhand grip more so than a straight bar, as well as the typical overhand grip. Now people talk about how dumbbells let you get a deep stretch, especially compared to barbells on chest pressing, but almost every single person I've ever seen, whenever they bench, they have a longer range of motion with the straight bar than with the dumbbells. That's because the sides of the dumbbells are going to end up hitting your torso, usually a full inch or two before the middle of the bar would. But I can only lower the dumbbells slightly below my nipples with a standard grip before my shoulders start screaming at me. And this really isn't any lower than I can go with a bar. Once again, I think with a bar it's actually a little bit deeper ultimately. Now with an underhand grip though, I can go lower than both of those. Not by a huge amount, but it is definitely an added stretch. And this is easier on the shoulders too than the already easier on the shoulders underhand barbell version, and no machines are needed. So when you take all those factors into account, I think the underhand grip with dumbbells is not only the safest option, but the most practical option for most people. But something I've been implementing more so into my chest training that I neglected for a long time is a fly type of motions. And then I got the bright idea to try this fly type of motion with everything we just talked about. So I call these dumbbell power flies, but since everybody likes to name exercises after themselves now, I guess we can call it the Revival Fly or the Revival Press. Let me know which one you think is better. But you guys know that I'm not a fan of the standard dumbbell flies with straighter arms since they can be very hard on the shoulders and they still really don't hit the pecs very well, especially at the lowest point. And the Power Fly fixes this with more elbow bent. So this way I get more of a stretch at the bottom, and I have much more support for the shoulders, given that my arms are closer to my torso. Now you can see I don't take a full reverse grip with these. My pinkies are angled together, more so than neutral, so it is technically underhand, but not completely supinated, even though that is possible to do with this exercise. I think to get the full convergence in the middle, you want to have a slight angle instead of being totally supinated. But I've done this on both incline and flat benches, even on the flat, I do seem to feel it more in my upper chest than I do with other exercises. And the dumbbell path basically takes a U-shape. So almost touching at the top, open your chest and lower your arms, keep the elbows closer to the sides and bend them, bring the dumbbells as low as you comfortably can, press up toward the center at a slight angle backwards, roughly about 20 degrees. That's going to be similar to a standard barbell or dumbbell bench press path and then converge the dumbbells as you come up. Do your best though not to clank them together at the top. You want to do your best to keep all the muscles fully engaged, especially the upper chest here at the top instead of letting the dumbbells hit into each other and then you shake a little bit and you might lose the tightness you have. You want to do your best to get very close with these but just not bash them into each other. And then you just repeat. And I usually will take these to technical failure I might go to absolute if I misjudge the last rep, or if I'm just feeling a little bit overzealous on a given day, but these are one of my go-to chest exercises right now. I recently threw them in, so they're still new in the rotation. We will see how they affect my upper chest growth as I get leaner and leaner over the coming months. But wait, there's more! Another exercise that has been around for a long time, and it seems to go once again in and out of popularity, it is the pullover. Now. The most common myth you hear about this exercise is that it expands your rib cage. No, it doesn't. And people still say this, but there is no way to expand your skeleton and your bone structure and all that stuff by doing resistance training. It's simply not possible. Genetically, you got what you got there, unless you get major reconstructive surgery, which 
at this point, guys will probably start doing that. But what the pullover does do quite nicely is hit the upper chest. And I will say too, this exercise absolutely fries the long head of my triceps. I feel it there as much as the upper chest, so I'm getting two birds stoned at once. And you can see I have a noticeable bend in the elbows, and I lower the negative pretty far down. This is well past my head. Now, I used to do these with a dumbbell, but once the dumbbell gets relatively big, it turns into a game of not hitting yourself in the head when doing this, and that ultimately didn't feel great on my shoulders. Now, given how closely you have to grip the dumbbell on those type of pullovers, your hands are basically on top of each other. I think it's harder to get the full stretch. I'm able to do so much more easily using this easy bar. And the easy bar is an extra bonus because it not only makes this exercise easier on the wrists given the curve in the middle, but especially a loadable easy bar like this one, you can increase the weight in small increments and it's far easier to clear your head. So this is really a trifecta for this type of movement. If you do not have a pullover machine, and I've seen more footage of UFOs and aliens, over the past five years than I actually have of pullover machines in gyms, these things are like Bigfoot, you're gonna have to do this with some type of free weight. And unless I'm missing something, there is no exercise besides a pullover that really stretches the upper chest in this type of overhead fashion this much. Now you get this to some degree on pull-ups and chin-ups and even pull-downs, but it's not comparable in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to have to do this for longer to get an adequate gauge of how effective it really is, but based on the data I have so far, and just the stimulus that I feel when doing it, it is definitely underrated. Now in terms of calisthenics, you can also try a decline push-up to hit the upper chest. And be careful with the amount of decline that you use here, because when guys start to do decline push-ups, the inevitable progression is to go into handstand push-ups, they like to just keep kind of nudging and nudging their way up. And those are definitely fun to do. I've never done a full one myself. I don't believe so. But if you want to really work on the upper chest and not really turn this into more of a circus act, you want to keep the decline at a more modest angle. Now, if you have a set of plyometric boxes that have the heights listed, that is probably the best way and the easiest way to track the height when doing this. You also can measure the depth of certain plates and stack them on plyo boxes or benches too, and then get the full reading. But no matter what you're doing with the decline push-up, I would say in terms of progression, if you're going from a standard push-up into decline, like you're not very good at even standard push-ups yet, you're going to have to slowly and steadily increase that decline until you reach a point of comfort, and that might take a while in its own right. Once you find a decline setting, I suppose, for yourself where you really feel the upper chest, I think around 45 degrees or so, roughly, is going to be a good point for a lot of people. Then you can stick there, and adding weight to these is not easy. You may have to put on a backpack. You really can't use a chain belt. That's pretty much all you got. Maybe a weighted vest, but those have their own sets of problems. If you guys would like a full breakdown on progressing with weighted calisthenics, you can check the video in the top corner. But the decline push-up is something that I have used in the past. I would tend to put this more so at the end of my routine, namely because adding weight is so hard, you're going to be kind of limited in that regard. But it definitely can still be effective, even if you have to do higher reps with this and kind of just go until you hit failure. I would prefer a neutral grip as opposed to overhand grip when doing this. If you want to get really froggy with this, you can do something like ring push-ups or decline push-ups, but if you're more new to the gym, I would not go for those yet. Risk to reward is not going to be there. I would like to try ring push-ups myself at some point coming up. I think I do have rings in my gym bag. I need to check. But if you have something to where you can converge your chest, so whether that is rings or those little slidey pads you can put on the floor, maybe dumbbells that can roll. Once again, be very careful here, guys. It's easy to fall on your head when doing something like this. But if you can get a converging motion and the decline push-up at the same time, I think you're really going to be able to fry that upper chest. But even if you don't have those options, even a standard decline push-up is without question the best method you have in terms of only your body weight. And that's what I got right now. So if there are some other exercises you guys have done, be sure to drop them in the comments down below. And let's try to grow these upper chests because, man, these things are just annoying as hell, aren't they? But this has been it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to grab your program down below. You can implement some of these tips. If you have questions about your own training and eating, you can get in direct contact with me. The best way is on Patreon. You can also join our Discord server. There are hundreds of active members every day. 
and use my links down below to save money on some great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.